Welcome to the Worship of God at First Church in Glastonbury, Connecticut. We are an open, welcoming, and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, which means this. You are welcome here. You are safe to sing or laugh or shed a tear. You are welcome here if you are happy or sad, confused or inspired, full of faith or full of questions, young or old, poetic or pragmatic, or a combination of all these things. You are welcome in our community, no matter your religion, your ethnicity, who you love, where you grew up, how much money you have, or the color of your skin. For here, we proclaim that each person is valuable, loved, and essential. This is a community where we strive to live out the words of the prophet Micah, to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome in our church as we work to make our world a more compassionate, just, and peaceful place. Welcome to the worship of God here at First Church in Glastonbury, Connecticut. We are an open, welcoming, and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome in our community. You are welcome here no matter your ethnicity, who you love, where you grew up, how much money you have, or the color of your skin. For here, we proclaim that each person is valuable, loved, and essential. Throughout the pandemic, we have worshipped outside and virtually, and now we have begun to worship in our beloved meeting house. This weekend and next, we'll be worshipping virtually, and then we hope we will be back in the meeting house for good on August 22nd. As always, we encourage you to read your reminder newsletter and the weekly blast for there is so much going on in this family of faith. We are grateful to belong to such an amazing community, compassionate and loving, hope-filled and justice-seeking. It is our privilege to be your pastors. Now, together, let us worship a good and gracious God. Please join me for the prayer of invocation followed by the Lord's Prayer. Holy One, we once again gather in our separate places to worship you, yet we know you are present with each of us. As we continue to adapt to the changing wisdom exercised during the pandemic, we seek out ways to be your church, a strong faith community, while considering our own safety and the safety of others. We are challenged to live wisely, to care about and for each other and our neighbors, and to acknowledge and find ways to deal with our own struggles. We are reminded that we are never alone, that you, loving God, are always by our side wherever we are. Your spirit surrounds us with wisdom and guidance. Your mercy is fresh every morning. You give us strength for each day and hope in the midst of change. You are our God and we are your people. We humbly continue our prayer with the one Jesus taught, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for the 
grace for them to spring fresh from the word. Mine is the sun, mine is the morning, born of the one light, deepest of play. Praise be the ancient, praise every It's Pastor Kate and Caitlin from church. We're excited to be here to do the children's message for you today. Hey, did you know that First Church is the place to be? There's so much going on here and so much love being shared. Just look at our back lobby. Can you see? Like there's food and there's items for Carol's Closet and we're helping refugee families. And this week we have Vacation Bible School happening here at church. Kids and teens and adults are learning and having fun together, and you got it, sharing love. The theme is Discovery on Adventure Island, Quest for God's Great Light. Our focus verses, Arise and shine, your light has come, the Lord's glory has shone upon you. Pretty good focus verse, right? Arise, shine, your light has come. And so each day during Vacation Bible School, we're learning about another faith word that's really important. So on Monday, we learned arise, shine with love, and then arise, shine with trust, and then arise, shine with faith, arise, shine with joy, and arise, shine with hope. Friends, it doesn't matter our age. Those are all good words to think about. Love, trust, faith, joy, and hope. And now two more of my friends from ba Vacation Bible School will share a special message with you. Hi, we've been here at VBS for three days now and we really love it. Um, we want you guys to keep in mind what we say and put it in your everyday lives. Arise, shine with love. Arise, shine with trust. Arise, shine with faith. Arise, shine with joy. Arise, shine with hope. And remember, always shine. Thank you. Thank you. And now, friends, may the good news of God's love be with you. Let us pass the peace. Let us join our hearts and minds in a spirit of prayer. Let us pray. God of mercy and goodness, of gentleness and kindness, of righteousness and faithfulness, thank you for the gifts of today and for reminding us to be imitators of you and to always live in love. We admit that sometimes we wrestle with our faith in you, God, and that we crave your presence your peace, your instruction, and your blessing. Sometimes we long for a miracle so that we know for sure that you are with us and that you hear us. So we come today asking for eyes to see the blessings you have provided for us and for strength for the journey of life. There are many times in which we feel isolated, unlovable, and alone. It is so easy, God, to wallow in our misery and to simply get stuck. Encourage us to stay strong, to have faith, and to recognize the ways in which you give us strength, wisdom, and courage. In this moment, we pray for our world, hurting and challenged. We pray for all those seeking justice, and we pray for those who have, who have no one to pray for them. Now, in this moment, we offer our prayers to you, God, of people on our hearts and minds.
Creator God, loving God, Holy Spirit, in this time of fear and anxiety and lots of unknowns, we confess that individually and collectively we have pushed you aside. No time for church, no time for God. We have squelched your work within us because we are afraid of a spirit-driven life and what it will mean. We have pushed you aside because we are busy. Forgive us, we pray, for not living up to our call to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. We are grateful that you are a God who forgives, loves, and encourages. Holy One, you grant us the gift of today where we can work to make the world a more loving, just, and peaceful place where miracles and blessings abound and where all people know your love. In this moment, we rededicate our lives to you and to your work. Hear our prayers, O oh God and know that we offer you this prayer in the name of Jesus, who teaches us to live and to love. Amen. God is near and will, be, will grant us rest and comfort. But sometimes I would like a little clarity in a few things. 
there are a couple of things that have led to my thoughts that I will share with you today. The first is that I read the letter to the Ephesians again. It is only six chapters long. It is a letter of instruction and encouragement, yet it left me with a question that has stayed with me. What is wisdom? The second has been my focus on the athletes and the dilemma of being a star athlete. I've been wondering about what it really means to live wisely and the connection to our mental health. Our scripture reading comes from that letter to the Ephesians. Ephesus was a large city and significant center of trade on the Aegean Sea. And this is not the first time we have heard about Ephesus in the Bible. In the book of Acts, which covers the beginning of the Christian church, Paul travels to Ephesus where he finds some disciples. They have been baptized, but they've not heard of the Holy Spirit, for they were baptized by John with the baptism of repentance. And so Paul baptized them in the name of Jesus, and when he placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came to them. Then Paul stayed with them for several months, teaching the good news. He moved on when the resistance to his teachings grew too hot, and he took many of his followers with him. Now in our reading today, Paul, or a follower of his writing in his name, writes back to the church in Ephesus, which were primarily Gentiles experiencing a radical transformation in their lives. Paul reassures them of their inclusion in the Church of Christ and guides them in their understanding of their relationship to God and of their role in their lives in the church and in family and community. Let us listen to the words written to the Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own needs, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, and so your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked as with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from all your bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together we will all malice and be kind to one another tender-hearted forgiving one another as god in christ has forgiven you therefore be imitators of god as beloved children and live in love as christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragment of offering and sacrifice to god be careful then how you live not an unwise people but as wise making the most of the time. As I mentioned, I've been wrestling with what it means to live wisely. What is and where do we find wisdom? When I heard the tennis player Naomi Sasaka skip the required press conference in order to take care of her mental health, I applauded her from my living room. She did so not in revolt, but because she recognized she needed to exercise self-care and preserve her mental health. This, I thought, chose wisdom on her part. She chose her health over complying with the demands of the industry she is part of. That she was forced to withdraw from the French Open because she broke away from the traditional and apparently sacred press conferences is appalling to me. It was the first time in seven years she has missed a press conference. 
And of course, the media wanted all the details of her symptoms, as if they questioned the legitimacy of her claim. Don't most employers allow a worker to take a personal day without a special accounting for why they need it? Athletes are human beings with lives outside their sport and are no different from the rest of us. We all go through something hard or distressing at some point in our lives. Do we want to share all the details with the world? I think it is wisdom to know it is okay to not be okay, to know there are people who understand and can help, and that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. As Osaka put it in the Time Magazine article about the athletes. I have to say I have gained some perspective, perhaps some wisdom, by listening to Naomi Osaka's story and seeing her strength and wisdom in taking care of herself in spite of the consequences. These last couple of weeks, I've been watching as much of the Olympics as I can. I am awed by the athletes. I cheer them on. I want everyone to do their best, and I wince when they falter. They have all worked so hard. I marvel at the ability of the medalists and celebrate their achievement, but my heart breaks for those who don't make it into those three spots. Simone Biles' decision to pull out of the competition was a shock for everyone. Though we had seen her uncharacteristically make significant errors during the warm-ups, what was going on with her? Then there were those voices that said she had walked out on her team, cheating them of medals and being a quitter when she was having a bad day. But she wasn't just having a bad day, and she did not quit on her team. She just quit from the competitions. There were those who wanted to know if she was hurt, and she said, no, it's, it's in my head. The public would have accepted a visible injury, but seems to struggle to understand an invisible injury. Yet we all have invisible injuries. Viles knew she was in a dangerous place mentally and physically, and wisely gave herself permission to take care of herself while cheering her team on as they achieved medals on their own. Oh, wisdom, how do we know you? How do we attain you? Turning to the dictionary, as I like to do, it seems wisdom is gained through experience and knowledge and is discerned. Turning to scripture, which I also like to do, Proverbs begins by saying, we should be in awe of the Lord for that is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom. And further along in Proverbs it says, to get wisdom is to love oneself. To love oneself is wisdom. The psalmist prays to God, you desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. In the Wisdom of Solomon, one of the deuterocanonical books of the Bible, we are told that the beginning of wisdom is the most sincere desire for instruction. And in the book of Sirach, also one of the deuterocanonical books, we read, before you speak, learn. And before you fall ill, take care of your health. Also in Sirach it is written, if you desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord will lavish her upon you. Keep the commandments. 
the greatest of which is love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and love your neighbor as yourself. This morning we heard in the letter to the Ephesians, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loves us. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of time. <laughs> that passage just keeps coming back to me. Oh, wisdom, how do we know you? How do we attain you? There is a story of a 13-year-old boy named William Kamkwabi, who lives in Malawi, a landlocked country in Southeast Africa, and a land where magic ruled and modern science was a mystery. His family, like most in this village, were subsistence farmers dependent on the maize they grew. But because the government had cut down the trees for profit, the land had become parched by drought and washed away by floods. William's father had tried to be wise and save money, and before the drought, he had been able to pay for William's schooling. But when he could no longer pay, the boy was kicked out of school. But he was hungry for knowledge, and so he began to sneak into the library. Now, William was naturally good at fixing things like radios and tools and bicycles, and the villagers would bring him their broken things and he would fix them. So naturally, when he was at the library, he was interested in books about how things work. And he learned about windmills and decided to make one for his family so they could have electricity and get water from the well. The challenge, was finding all the parts, which he did, all except the dynamo that converted the wind power into electricity. For that, he would need to take apart his father's treasured bicycle. His father first refused. It was after all the way he got into town to buy supplies and get food from, that's handed out by the government to feed his family. And there was the clash, the father's wisdom of hanging on to the one thing that helped keep his family barely alive, and the boy's wisdom of the need of a windmill. The known future, as dismal as it appeared, and the magic of science, as unrealistic as it seemed. But the father finally relented. His young son went on to harvest the wind and pump water from the deep well to irrigate their small farm. William was soon building windmills for other farmers in the village, improving their lives as well. Since finishing school in the village, he attended a prep school in Johannesburg and received a scholarship to Dartmouth College, where he earned the degree in Environmental Studies and Engineering in 2014. His story is now in a book and a Netflix movie, both titled The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. Oh, wisdom, how do we know you? How do we attain you? In the United Church of Christ, we say all are welcome here, no matter where you are in life's journey. Along life's journey, we discover who we are, what gifts and talents we have, and finding ways to use those gifts and talents to serve the community, the church community, the greater community in which we live, the world, and all creation. Along the journey, we will make mistakes. We will stumble and fall. It is one of the ways we learn. As in the Kamkwaba family, sometimes what seems wise to one will not seem so wise to another. 
Have you ever looked back on one of your decisions and thought, wow, that wasn't very wise? I have. And so you see, I continue to work on this question, how do we know true wisdom in any given situation? And my answer for now is through prayer, by being open to the movement of the Spirit of God, following the instructions in Scripture, like the commandments, striving to be imitators of Christ and knowing as best we are able God's will, not just for us, but for the world, even if it means we have to adjust our lives, change the direction we thought we were going in. We can trust that God is in our midst, guiding us along the way. Thanks be to God. Amen. into the world in peace, to be of good courage, to hold fast to that which is good, to render to no one evil for evil, to strengthen the faint-hearted, to support the weak, to help the afflicted, to rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. As we all go forward into our lives, I pray that we may be strengthened in our inner being with power through the Holy Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith as we are being rooted and grounded in love. May we be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Amen. <laughs>